Hey y'all, Austin's Animals, and with these toy uh, pickups, I usually show stuff that I've gotten at the past, like, week or month of thrift store and flea markets, but today, I, I did so well at my local flea market that I felt like I needed to just show today's pickups, because this is one of those flea market days that you just talk about for months, like, I wish I had another day like that day where I found that stuff. This really is why you get out of bed at the crack of dawn, you know, you get a big coffee, and you walk 10,000 steps and get exhausted in the hot sun. Days like this. So starting things off, uh, I got this really cool uh, Peter Rabbit ceramic. Uh, I see this Beatrix Potter stuff all the time, and I usually pass on it because, you know, you only have so much room, and if I buy a couple pedo rabbit things, I feel like I'm going to end up with a whole shelf. So usually it's a no. But this one was special because this is not a commercially available piece. This is actually a store display if your store sells pedo rabbit merchandise. This would sit in the center of a display shelf with ceramic and glass collectibles around it. See how it says Beatrix Potter Collectibles? And then... Uh, it's supposed to say the name of the company, but someone stickered it over. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe that was the name of their hobby shop they ran. But this was only given to vendors uh, to put on display. Pretty nice piece, pretty cool, and I don't know, there's something always magical about this stuff you can't have. I love store displays, promotional pieces. Oftentimes, uh, I think they're more interesting than the actual commercial piece themselves. Okay, moving on. I got the Disney Store Zootopia Nick and Judy. I found these at two different booths at the same swap meet, which I found I thought was a little strange, but hey, I'm never going to turn these down. These are great plush. Uh, these came out at the Disney Store when the movie came out. And in just the few years that Zootopia has been out, uh, these have become quite collectible. And that has to do with the new Zootopia Plus they're making. I'll be honest, they're not that great. You can go to the Shop Disney store and look up Judy Hopps, and what you'll notice is a lot of the new Zootopia merchandise is, uh, it kind of has that chibi, simplified aesthetic to it. I think that aesthetic works for certain characters, you know, like the, like the Funko Pop Finals, where they have little dots for eyes and big hands and feet, and they're very stylized. Uh, I don't mind that, but in the case of these characters which are very complex 3D animated designs, they do look their best when they have all their detail. Um, Judy especially, the new Judy plush they're making, they just don't look that great. So if you want an accurate depiction of the character, you have to track down one of these older ones. It is also a little strange how out of scale Nick and Judy are. Usually Nick is a lot taller, but I know the Disney store was trying to create a good value proposition. And these were like, what, $25 when they came out? So selling a tiny Judy, uh, while in scale with the Nick, uh, wouldn't have looked that good on a shelf. I get that. Uh, they're great plush, and I'm not the biggest fan of Zootopia. I know I said that in my last video, but I still do love the character designs, and they are a welcome addition to the collection. Uh, up next, <laughs> who remembers Totally Spies? I unironically loved this show as a kid. I know, it's kind of a goal show, but I always thought it was great. The Valley Goals and the Secret Agents, and some of the villains were just so interesting and neat. They always had, like, these big, bombastic James Bond finales where, like, the villain would... I don't know, he always did stupid stuff to the town to, like, destroy the world. Uh, this, this DVD, I think it has the infamous Foy episode on it, where he turns all the humans into animal people. It is hysterical, so I got to add that to the collection. Also, because you don't usually see complete season DVDs of these obscure shows. You kind of see a best-of compilation. I mean, Totally Spies, I've never seen any DVD of. It does say As Seen on Cartoon Network, which means this, this might have been one of those Cartoon Network online items. I know the website always had these expensive DVDs of, like, Chowdo and Flapjack, and I always wanted them, but they were like 30 bucks plus shipping. Uh, the guy that I bought this from actually had some other really great animation DVDs that um, I picked out to sell. 
one of the reasons I always go to the swap meet is my, my dad looks for things to resell and uh, he doesn't know animation and cartoons as well as I do. So I love to tag along and joke that I kind of have the eye and uh, look for good shows and collectible items. He just had a lot of uncommon DVDs. Uh, I think it was someone's storage locker and uh, whose ever collection it was, they were really invested in animation to order these specialty items. So really cool. Another great one for the collection. But finally, the real score of the day, of all people, came from a video game booth. Uh, I don't usually go in video game booths because if you've never been to a flea market, for some reason right now, video games are seen as like the hottest commodity. They are like up there with sneakers in terms of collectible items for young guys. Uh, it doesn't even matter if it's a good video game or not. Even a bad video game will be $25 at a flea market. They just think they have gold, and it's always so overpriced. But I went in a flea I went into a video game booth, because they had a couple of Ewok items on the table uh, that were priced a little high. But then I looked under the table. You've always got to look everywhere in the flea market booth. And I noticed these. The 2000 Playing Mantis Rudolph action figures. These are some of the best, honestly, the best action figures ever made. This is an amazing line of toys that was put together by Playing Mantis. Uh, it actually didn't just include Rudolph, but all of the Rankin Bass properties. Uh, they ended up making Santa Claus is Coming to Town, A Year Without a Santa Claus, and uh, Peter Cottontail, a couple others. It's, it's a really amazing line of toys that Toys R Us had every Christmas as a seasonal item. But... Uh, these items were eventually discontinued and have become pretty uh, desirable in the year since. So, starting with this one, we have the Charlie in the box. And this is how I found them at the table. They were stacked like this. So I'm like, okay, this one's cool. This is a fun figure. And I took this one and I'm like, oh, this is a great one too. This is Sam the Snowman. It's Bull Lives as an action figure. The great legendary folk singer. Uh, he also appeared in Elf, so if you like Elf, you'll want this one. And then we get to the final figure. Now, these are both great figures. Uh, I didn't know, actually, how collectible they were on the aftermarket. They're pretty tough to find nowadays. And they're fun, great representations of the character. I'll buy anything that's Rudolph. But there is one figure in this line that is considered the kind of holy grail, the unobtainable. And it, it is the coolest figure of the line. Also one of the biggest. And I remember thinking to myself as, as I was lifting this one, you know, who's going to be the last figure at this table? Is it going to be Homie the Elf? Is it going to be the, um, the Abominable Snowman? Which is a great figure. He's cool. But no, it is the legendary King Moonracer figure. This is an action figure that I have always dreamed of owning, but never thought I would actually have. He is so tough to even find for sale. This figure is absolutely amazing. Just look at the detail. Look at his um, textured fur, how he's flocked. This action figure is composed of mixed media with plastic wings, flocked fur, and a furry mane. This is really an amazing, amazing action figure that looks just like one of the puppets from the show. They really captured that Rankin Bass look. A gorgeous, gorgeous action figure. Uh, I ended up buying all three for a very, very great price. And I just remember just holding these figures tightly as I left the flea market. So happy. I mean, this is why I go. The other stuff is fun. These are neat finds. But this, this is the heart of my collection here. I absolutely love anything related to the Rankin Bass Christmas specials. And I also love action figures of animals and anything that is flocked, you know, I, I'm a little crazy with the Calico Quiddos and Sylvanian families. So a flocked action figure of a Rankin Bass animal, it kind of like checks every box of what I want in a toy. I'm so, so happy to have this. Now, unfortunately, I will not be opening this one. I don't think I'm going to be opening any of these because, you know, they're just too pricey. And if I keep looking... I think I'll be able to find at least some of these figures loose. I know I'll find a Sam the Snowman loose. He's pretty common. But 
just to even have a King Moon Ray. So I'm just kind of going to hang that on my wall and just stare at it because I'm so, so happy to have that. So my advice to all you out there is to just keep looking and you'll never know. You know, I, I almost didn't even go in the booth that had these. They didn't even sell anything I wanted. And I only found it when I looked under the table. You really have to keep looking. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and, you know, bargain and strike a deal. Because there's some amazing stuff out there that can be rescued at a flea market. And that, that's the way I look at it. I am rescuing this stuff and putting it into my collection. And I'm so happy to have it. Okay, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, keep on hunting out there. And have a fantastic day.